Hi guys, welcome to Heartlight Tarot and Astrology. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, I am a tarot reader and an inspiring astrologer. I'm going to be doing my first full moon readings in Leo today for you guys. Um, the full moon is occurring today as I am shooting this video. I wanted to get this video out earlier, but my personal life didn't allow me and I also wasn't feeling very well. But I'm back at it and I'm here to talk about this full moon with you. Um, so a full moon occurs when a, the moon and the sun are, in, are on either side of the earth. So the earth is in between the, the moon and the sun. All right. So we feel that as a collective, especially uh, right now for you, Taurus, you guys are a fixed sign, just like the sign of Leo. So if you have any personal place, plants in Leo or any of the fixed signs between three and six degrees, or even a couple degrees after that, you're going to be feeling this more intensely than any of the other signs okay so just be aware of that um and that that goes for your rising your sun your moon or any other the placements that you have because with the full moon it's really um an expansive energy because think back to the summertime of when you were feeling the new moon energy in leo okay and that this this full moon is the culmination of it it's the ending or the climax you would say of the full moon or the new moon in um, the summertime of leo so where were you what were you doing in the summertime um this is going to be affecting you in your fourth house okay and your fourth house is your foundation, your day-to-day -day life behind the scenes with your family, okay? Um, it's your home. It's your your roots, your childhood roots. Um, and it's opposing, you know, Pluto and Aquarius in your 10th house of career and, you know, relationships with, you know, people that are higher up than you. It could be parental figures too, um, but it's most likely going to be happening in, you know, the world of, you know, your job and your career. So the fact that it's opposing it with the full moon in your fourth house, um, there can be some kind of endings in the way that you run your home. Um, you could be moving. Um, you could be renovating. And this is the very end of your renovation. Um, the fact that it is opposing the 10th house, anything that any any of the houses that oppose each other, they, they just affect each other, okay? And with the sun and the moon being complete opposite luminaries and Leo and Aquarius being completely opposite entities, um, where do you feel yourself juggling between the two, okay? Um, are you working from home? Is that, is that what's going on? And you feel like it's just too overwhelming because you feel like you need to be in the office around people. Um, do you feel like um, just things at home are not working for you anymore in regards to your work? Like um, what's going on in that area of your life? Um, it's also going to be squaring Taurus, uh, which is you, Jupiter and Taurus in your first house. So these things might be really highlighted for you if you are a Taurus rising, okay? It will... Um, resonate for Taurus suns, but it's most likely in career rather than, um, you know, overall personal, personal endeavors. So I'm going to get you guys some cards. All right. So in your present energy, you're walking away from something that doesn't serve you anymore, or you're walking away from um, your past. Okay. Your past is not something that's going to be working for you anymore. All right. And you have the clips in the background. So maybe you're facing your fears. Okay. Maybe something is ending and you're not scared of anything anymore. It's causing you to hold on to your money for, or for pentacles being here. Um, what have you been, uh, um, focusing your time and energy on that you're now walking away from because you're able to face your fears. Okay. Maybe this was having you, um, confused. Okay. Because the eight of cups is after the seven of cups. So maybe you were, had some kind of confusion and you're just kind of getting through your day to day grind, day to day life. Okay. And now you're noticing it and you're able to look at your fears and face them and then just leave them because they're no longer going to hold you back. 
with the four of pentacles being here, I felt like you were maybe holding on to your money and maybe scared to spend it. Or you now know that it's just not the time to um I don't know. I kind of I kind of sense this. I kind of feel this because pentacles are your your foundation, right? They're your your they're your home. They could be your home. They could be <clears throat> your resources considering this full moon is happening in your fourth house and this is the four of pentacles. I just feel like something in your home and your foundation you're walking away from it because it no longer serves you anymore to hold on to it. So whatever that means for you, okay? In your recent past, you have the Nine of Wands, and it's clarified with the Lovers. The Nine of Wands is feeling of exhaustion, right? He looks tired. He has his his arms wrapped, his head wrapped. He looks like he could use a good meal and a nap, <laughs> right? He's He's got the green land behind him, so he's probably been working on the land. Um, the Wands, he's been doing a lot of things to kind of get to where he needs to be because, you know, he just feels like it's not time to stop yet. It's clarified with the lovers here. Um, you could be, be working really hard with a significant other to, to maintain some kind of lifestyle. So maybe it was you and somebody else that you're in a relationship with. Um, the lovers is a sign of Gemini too. So if that resonates with you guys as well. But the lovers, it's, it's a card that tells me that you decide... It's a decision between two lovers as well. The nine of wands could be some kind of player energy as well too. So maybe there was somebody that you had to choose between or they had to choose between somebody and you were the person, one of the people that they had to choose. That could be for some of you as well. But I really don't see a relationship in this. I feel like <clears throat> with the nine of wands being here, you worked really hard, okay? You worked really hard and... You had to choose between two types of relationships, okay? Maybe that was the relationship between, you know, a parent and um, a person that you're in a relationship, a physical relationship with, okay? And um, it was making you exhausted. And so maybe now you decide that you can make up your own mind and, and live your own life. And um, it's going to change the way that your home and your family dynamics work. Um, you could be work. You could have been working really hard towards a goal, and maybe your partner wasn't helping you. That's I see that for some of you as well. Um, maybe you felt yourself being pulled to kind of let go of the expectation of somebody else to help you. Is what I see here. Okay, and it might be affecting your home life. Okay. Um. In your near future, you have the Two of Swords. It's your emotions blocked off. It's not wanting to make a choice, having to make a choice between two things. And the answer to it is using your intuition and using your heart. So the answer to this card, because it doesn't really look like that pleasant of a card, right? She looks miserable. <clears throat> Nobody wants to sit there and with their eyes blindfolded with two swords, right? They don't want to sit like that. They have their emotions to their back. The moon is their emotions. They're covering their heart. It looks like if anybody walks up, they'll cut them, right? You don't, that's not an energy that anybody wants. <clears throat> it doesn't last long though, because you're going to make a decision and you're going to use your intuition to do it, or you're being pushed to by watching this reading, okay? You have the page of, wand clar page of wands clarifying it. So maybe that's somebody that's a younger fire sign that's going to help you make this decision, or you can just really be digging deep into what it is that makes you happy and passionate and being a child again. Kind of just being curious for life and not being blocked off. Okay. I feel like you guys need another card because I don't really like to leave it on this note. So I'm going to get you guys one more card for the sign of Taurus. We'll just call it an advice card, okay? An advice card for the sign of Taurus, please. You guys got the Wheel of Fortune. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen regardless of the need to control, okay? Um, you could choose to live 
in between all of the energies and just let the world kind of happen and not control anything. Because if you look at this card, you have all of your fixed energies, right? And speaking as a fixed energy, you guys are a fixed energy. We have a same way of doing things and change is not very easy. And the wheel of fortune is change. So something's happening. Something's changing for you guys. I feel like it's in the regards to your family roots or your day-to-day -day life outside of, you know, what's going on in the real world, at your home. Um, I just feel like things are going to happen and um, it's going to be out of your control. And you're going to realize that it's going to be the best bet for you guys because you're going to be facing fears here. Okay. Um, I hope this makes sense. It makes sense to me. Um, let me know in the comment box if you, um, if this is resonating for you and how it's resonating for you. Okay. I would like to hear about it. Um, don't miss, uh, the new year's or not new year's, the Valentine's day readings I'm going to be posting here soon. They're going to be considered my bi-weekly love reading. And um, awesome. I'm also going to be posting the beginning of February as well. So hit the notification bell. Don't miss out. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.